All right, how is it going, everybody? Thank you for tuning in today for the very first episode of the Metal Blade live chat series. I am your host, Riley McShane, singer for Metal Blade band A Legion, and I am joined today by my friend uh, Yaki Walgren, drummer for this little band called Amana Marth. Uh, how you doing today, man? I'm super good. Thank you for asking. Yeah, of course. Uh, Thank you for joining uh, us. It's, it's a great summer here in Sweden, so it's uh, it's nothing to complain about, actually. So. Yeah, so I hear I hear that you guys have like 18 hours of daylight during this this time of the year. Is that yeah? Like, how do you not lose your mind? I <laughs> uh, it's it's hard because I mean, in in the winter it's the opposite. It's like dark when you get up and it's dark when you go to bed. We have like three three or four hours of some time, uh, but now it's the opposite, as you mentioned. So. I mean, it's nice. The sun keeps keeps us going, you know, but sometimes it's really hard to, I don't know, get to sleep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Because it's so, so bright and, <laughs> and it feels like it's noon pretty much all the time. So. I, uh, but, I, 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 live, I live in a pretty sunny spot of uh, California myself down in, in San Diego, and uh, mm-hmm. I invested in, in blackout curtains pretty much as soon as I moved down here. I was just like, nope, uh-huh. block block all the sun out of here. <laughs> I have too many screens in my life that uh need <laughs> that too too much glare. Uh, yeah. Well, that's cool, man. I'm glad you're uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's it seems like a weird question because it's like, oh, how do you deal with that? And it's like, bro, you live there. Like you've been how many summers have you experienced in Sweden? Right? It's like it's nothing nothing yeah. unusual. No, it's not. But I mean, if you come even more north in Sweden than I am, because I'm I'm in Stockholm, which is mid Sweden. Right. If you, if you come up north, it's it's even less. It's like I don't know, an hour, 45 minutes of, of uh, darkness. And it's not even dark. It's just the sun is like here instead of up here. So yeah, it's that like kind of twilight kind of hour. Of yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's so gnarly. Well. So it's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you actually get a little bit of nighttime. Um, yeah, a few hours at least. Well, that's awesome, man. So, you know, I'm sure... Uh, as as is the rest of the world being in a in a in a state of relative lockdown that you're doing lots of stuff indoors um i i've seen that a little bit of that is some live streaming stuff that you've been doing uh mostly drum stuff uh what made you want to start doing that and uh you know what what has it been like for you uh first of all it's it's been it's been great to be to to be honest i i love interacting with the fans and there are a lot of drummers who follows me, so it's nice to be able to like explain stuff to them, like what kind of I don't know technique I'm using for this and this. But uh, what really st- made made me start was well, first I, I did this streaming on Instagram with only my my um, my camera, and I realized like oh, this sound isn't as good as I want it, and then I. When I get interested in something, I kind of want to take it to the max level, you know, with like equipment and uh, and tech stuff. So I decided to invest. Well, it was wasn't a lot of investment in this device. It was I don't know, maybe one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but still, it it, it uh, yeah. I, and everything in this uh, this live streaming is uh, as I hear it when I play it. So it's like very natural sound to it. And I just started to explore that, and then, yeah, I just kept it going, I guess. So that's awesome, man. It's uh, a lot of people have have kind of jumped on that train with all this downtime and, yeah. and the inability to be on the road and touring and playing shows. Um, you know, something that we have uh, talked talked to death uh, in the Metal Blade <laughs> podcast uh, that we were doing before this little live series. But uh, it's it's really cool to see everybody everybody kind of jumping on that train and. You know, being creative about the ways that they're, uh, you know, getting their music out there in lieu of being able to actually get out there. So it's uh, yeah, exactly yeah, and I think it's really it's really important as well because, I mean, some bands do uh, live shows. I mean, online live right. shows. Um, and since we didn't do that, I think it's really important to like tell everyone that we're still alive and not just hanging on the sofa and doing nothing you know so 
we are actually paying you know <laughs> yeah that's awesome but, man. but not live so yeah are, are there any other uh any other musicians that you personally have watched uh do any streams or is it pretty much just like narrow focus on on getting your streams out there uh i don't watch too many mu um, musicians streaming uh i do watch uh, matt from Trivium and alex yeah. from Trivium. uh from time to time not everyone uh, not all the time but oh, yeah. uh, from time to time but that's pretty much all all i watch to be honest yeah yeah no i'm a matt's matt's a great dude um and alex yeah. alex as well it's really funny uh I used to live up in, in the Northern California area. And before uh, Alex had joined Trivium, uh, he was playing with this band called Archaic, I want to say, is who he was playing with. Um, super cool tech death band from from around the area. And uh, he ended up crashing at my house for a couple days while he was getting ready for tour. He might have been playing with Decrepit Birth, now that I think about it. But either way, um, and super, super nice guy. Very, very quiet. Oh, uh, yeah. Really, yeah. really humble dude. Uh, great personality. So it's it's cool to see him getting the same kind of traction from streaming that Matt has gotten, who is like king of music streamers. <laughs> yeah. So it's... Yeah, uh, he, he, I think he actually is, right? I think he's the biggest musician on Twitch, at least. Yeah, he is for sure. I mean, he's on the, uh, he's on the Streamlabs. Uh, the Streamlabs, like when you open up Streamlabs to sign up for it, it's like a picture of Matt and a picture of a of another streamer so it's it's pretty cool man oh, to see yeah. to see not only musician streamers but like metal streamers getting that kind of a uh, kind of attention and kind of you know being placed into the forefront of of streaming culture is pretty awesome have you guys ever yeah. toured did you ever tour with trivium in the past uh during my four and a half years in mrmr we did not tour with them but we ended up at the same shows and festivals right you know summer summertime mostly so that's awesome yeah i mean super cool guy super good music super good band so it's always fun to meet meet friends on on the road yeah definitely um well that's awesome so uh i i see here that you posted in may uh that you said you really you realized you really liked to explain things behind the kit a lot actually and so i'm thinking of maybe starting doing lessons via skype if i get all the equipment to work uh have you been doing lessons and in general what has your experience been like using these different platforms to connect with your fans um you know it looks like there's been a lot of trial and error and copyright issues and all that fun oh, stuff yeah. that that we we get to enjoy <laughs> as streamers um uh oh yeah no, I, well i don't know where to start yeah. uh, <laughs> with, with, with the lessons yeah I've, I've been doing a lot of lessons and I still do uh, from time to time. It's more like when I announce that I'm available for lessons that people actually connect to me and say, hey, can you give me a lesson? Sure. And then we get it going. And I I haven't done that for a long time now. So I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I probably have to start all over again yeah. <laughs> uh, explaining. But it all started when I did a live stream for uh, for Sabian, my symbol, symbol uh, endorser. Uh, endorsement, sorry. And uh, they uh, they asked me if I could do a session of just explaining the basic metal beats, pretty much. And that's when I started to realize that I like to explain stuff. And that's why I did this lesson thing as well. And I did some lessons. Uh, and it's been uh, well received. People are really enjoying it. I've had clients from all over the world, like South America, up to all the way up to Canada uh at least 10 different countries in europe so it's uh it's been quite successful for me at least <laughs> that's awesome man uh what do you yeah. find it's like working with uh with students from all those different cultures it's interesting for sure especially the the language barrier yeah uh it's sometimes it could be hard if they don't know what a i don't know what a, what a triplet is so we right. have to explain to them like okay it's not four notes it's three notes in the same yeah. blah 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 and they will it's um yeah but that's the hardest part i guess the the language barrier otherwise people have been really cool about it uh because they get to know well mostly it's people that follows me on instagram that uh that, that asks for lessons 
and uh, it's nice to hear their stories about how they well discovered me and and uh, how they want to play as right. I do. So it's a very like give and take situation. It's not only that I teach them something, but I I really enjoy it because I get something back as well. Right, that is super cool. I, uh, I do a little bit of vocal coaching myself in that same kind of mm-hmm. thing where it's a lot of online students and people that have, you know, found me through music. And, and it's interesting, uh, you know, seeing the way that people will kind of try to jump into the deep end and be like, oh, teach me how to sing these Legion songs or teach me how to scream these death metal parts. And it's like, well, do you know, do you know the basics yet and all that kind of stuff? So getting getting to watch people who are super eager and super excited and then taking them kind of back to the basics and, and teaching them from the ground up. It's, it's super rewarding. I totally get that seeing them progress and seeing your students grow with you. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I love it. It's That's really awesome. Cool. That's awesome, man. Um, so I've also got here that, uh, uh, you've got some, some pretty interesting live stories. Uh, <laughs> someone <laughs> brought it to my attention that you posted a, a photo a uh, memory of when a Monomarth triggered a fire alarm in Gothenburg and the entire arena had to be evacuated. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. What a, you know, if that memory particularly, if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to jump into that, uh, but any of yeah, your sure. other good or <laughs> good or bad uh, tour memories, what are some of your most memorable live experiences with a Monomarth? Well, first of all, I will get back, back get back to this uh, Gothenburg yeah. <laughs> incident, but my, one of the biggest events that I, for me personally, uh, was uh, then because when when I joined them on the Mars, we played four smaller shows for like press and uh, specific fans for the release of uh, Jones Viking, the previous album. Right. And uh, yeah, we did four small shows. It was like seven, eight hundred cap. And with my previous band, uh, Valkyria, uh, that was like a sold out show. Yeah. So I was like, shit, shit, this is big, you know? <laughs> and then, then we did an eight week touring in the US uh, where it's like 1,500 to, I don't know, 3.5 thousand cap venues. And uh, after that, which I thought was huge as well. I remember when I, yeah, we were doing this European festival, summer festival tour. And the first ones were uh, Rock in, Rock and Ring and Rock in Park. Right. And they are, I don't know how big they are, like 50, 60,000 cap festivals. Something yeah. Like that. Oh, yeah. And my bass player just came up to me, I don't know, 10 minutes before the show. I did my normal warm up routine and everything, and he came up to me like, he put his hand on my shoulder and said, "You okay? Are you ready for the big stuff?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh Jesus, this is a big festival." I, di- I didn't really think of it by then, uh, so I, I was like, "Holy shit, I have to really focus now." So I, I, I remember that that specific moment, just entering the stage, putting my drumstick up in the air behind the kit, everyone goes nuts. That moment was surreal for me. That's that's it's funny that you you mentioned that. Uh, I think the very first time that I ever saw a Monomarth, I I want to say you were there. Correct me if I'm wrong, because it was in 2016, um, mm-hmm. and it yeah, was we'll it was at Ozfest uh, in oh, 2016 yeah. down in San Bernardino. Uh, a Legion had played that that show as well, and that was also my first big festival with a Legion because I had just joined them in 2015. So oh, it was nice. it's 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 kind of funny how how the you know the paths crossed in that weird way where it's like you know my first big festival experience going out playing in front of you know 10 15 20 thousand people uh you know also happened to be a show that amana marth was also playing right after you had joined that's 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 pretty hilarious but i know that's <laughs> when you know I, we've played a few festivals since then uh hellfest particularly uh in 2019 mm-hmm. and yeah man it's it's crazy how it's you know, you look out there and it's just like, wow, that's like 50,000 people. That is a lot of people sitting out there. Um, do you, I know that when I see that, I view the crowd as like an object at that point. It's not like, you know, oh, the, those are a bunch of people. It's just like, that's a crowd. That's just like a, a thing that I'm playing my music for. Do you have a similar experience or are you, when you view all those people, are you just like, wow, that's that's a lot of, a lot of people? 
Well, I, I always had that last thought in, in mind, of course, uh, but normally I don't, I'm, I'm not as nervous playing in front of 60,000 people as I am playing in front of 20 people. Yeah. Because yeah. That, that's, that's more intimate than people will like stand and watch you like this. But uh, it, yeah, to be fair, I, I don't really care how many people are is, is watching because I mean, over a specific amount of people. I mean, I'm, as I said, I'm more nervous for 20 people than 60,000. But w w when it comes to these big numbers, I can still only see like the first 10 rows. Yeah. And, and then it's just a blur because yeah, you know, fire goes up and smoke happens and adrenaline happen, you know, so it's, yeah, yeah it, it doesn't matter how many people are beyond that, those 10 rows because yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 still a show. I have to deliver my best at every show, and that's that's my main focus. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm 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 the same way with uh, the big crowds versus the small intimate crowds. It's like I'll I'll go on stage and be super confident in front of you know a, a ton of people and and you know rock out and perform. But then when it's like, oh hey dude, you want to go do karaoke in front of ten people? I'm like, nah, man. I'm I'm okay. <laughs> I get I get too nervous. That's weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I I totally get that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so and, and anyway, so that that uh, thing with uh, my first festivals that that's one of the, my main main memories, my biggest memories, and then of course the Gothenburg incident. Yeah, tell tell me about that. I mean, I'm not sure if it was the first. I think it was the first show we did on that tour in Sweden, and it's always a bit nervous to play at home. Right. I mean, in Sweden because uh, you have friends there i had my cousins there they were i haven't seen them for i don't know 10 12 years oh wow and uh, i invited them to come to the show and they accepted so they came there i was like yeah fuck yeah we got i'm gonna deliver so so hard you know and uh yeah we played we started the show as as usual i was so stoked did an extra warm-up and everything and then we have this uh, concussion bang in uh, uh, in the beginning of the of the song, right, and that somehow triggered the I don't know the fire alarm. I think combined with all the fire and smoke we had. Uh, so yeah, the fire alarm came on, and uh, I just kept playing because I didn't realize something happened. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but I because it happened before that the guitars cuts out. And I just have to play the song out of memory, uh, and then they will come back. And I just hope I'm, I'm at the same spot as, as they are in the song. <clears throat> and I thought it was one of those moments, but it wasn't because I was like, "Yeah, I have to play. I still have to play. You no know, guitars. I know the riff. Yada yada." And then I opened my eyes and I saw the whole the whole arena was lit up. Oh no! <laughs> and I could see my guitar player is walking away from the stage. <laughs> so I was like. Okay, uh, is our vocalist singing here? I did, I couldn't see him because he already left. So I just had to like I made a slow slow down because somehow the the drums were still audible for the audience. And uh, yeah, that was weird, super weird. I have never had to not abort, but like had, had, I have never had this interruption right. in a, in a show uh, like that. And uh, then we just went off stage and waited for the fire department to arrive. And that took one hour for them to come. Well, not to come, but for everything to be settled. Right. And and by that, the audience had to be evacuated out into the rain without their coats and everything. Oh, man. <laughs> That's rough. So, uh, yeah. And I, I, I was so nervous. I, I asked the band, like, where do we continue? Do we, like, play the song from the beginning? Do we... Do we keep playing from where we stopped or do we just play the next song? I was super nervous. Right. Of the... That's got to be, it's one of those things that it's like, how do you prepare for that? Right. Like no one, no one expects yeah. your, your venue to, you know, ca catch on fire when you're, uh, <laughs> when yeah. you're in the middle of playing a show. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was super weird. And then, and they were like, yeah, we're just going to start from the next song. And I was like, okay, cool. That's fine. Easy. So we did. And then, and then we played the entire set up till the, last song which also has a concussion bang and uh a lot of fire as some other songs do and smoke 
So we played, I don't know, 80% of that song, maybe. Uh, and when the, when the band came, came on, the th same thing happened again. So oh, we just no. like, okay, fuck it. We're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna stop playing this, this show now. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a bit weird, but, uh, I mean, you have to try everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. You know, the show must go on as they, as they say, um, yeah. I had but, a but similar, it was a very unfortunate ending for the audience though. So yeah, and us, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure the next show in Gothenburg was, was better. Uh, if there's been a next show since then <laughs> I, it hasn't but it has, the next day we played in stockholm and that's that was the same promoter so oh okay with, with the same crew and everything so they they learned yeah we were like we would, don't want this to happen again no yeah. no no we promised it would happen again yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing i had a, a yeah. similar experience happen uh obviously in a in a much smaller venue on the last tour that a legion did uh in the states mm -hmm. we we had all these fog machines going off and they point them straight up, right? So they look like pyrotechnics, but they're just fog machines. They're, they're these like geysers that shoot up into the air. And uh, we uh, we were playing at some venue, I think, in like North Carolina. And uh, yeah, the 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 fire alarms were like right above the stage. So during the entire set, we just had these fog machines just shooting right into the fire alarms. And uh, yeah, halfway through our last song. Uh, you know, all the lights turn on and I see these firemen like rush in with their hose and I'm just like, what the fuck oh. is going on here? <laughs> so, yeah, gotta, gotta be careful with those, those fog machines and all that, that pyro. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, that is, uh, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I hope, uh, I hope you get a lot of, a lot more fun tour stories like that that are a little bit less chaotic as time <laughs> goes on when touring comes back. So, I've got a uh, a few questions from some of the chats that have been watching uh, this this little interview conversation. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll ask a couple of those before we close up here. So someone what? asks uh, uh, someone asks uh, Blake from Between the Barrier to Me has been streaming on Twitch a ton. Are you ever going to jump platforms uh, like him and and stream to to more different platforms? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, it's kind of a hassle because where I'm at, where I practice uh, my drums and where my my drums are at, uh, that building does not have Wi-Fi, so so it's really hard to do that. So all, all the all the streaming I've been doing so far has been on my 4G mobile data plan. Oh wow, uh, which kind of sucks, but. I don't mind, but I think I don't think it would be the same kind of quality as I would like to provide uh, doing that with uh, Twitch because it's I don't know it's somehow more complicated, I guess. So right, but I mean, I I can try. I have my own Twitch channel where I mostly stream my Call of Duty games. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I could probably try it and see how it turns out at least. That's if it awesome. sucks, then I guess it sucks, but yeah. <laughs> you have to try it, probably. Yeah. What are you going to do? Trial and error. Um, yeah. Another question I have here is, uh, are you planning any other drum covers besides Amon Amarth, Norther, and Amorphous songs? Uh, not as we, as we are right now, but it, I no, normally don't plan my covers. Right. I. I just like to play, and uh, those clips you can see on uh, Instagram, they are like the songs I enjoy playing right now. Right. So if, if I'm very into black metal, then it, it could be that I happen to do a black metal cover or another fast power metal cover or anything. But uh, we'll see. If, uh, if people have suggestions of me playing a specific song, which isn't super technical, then I could probably do it. They just have to DM me on Instagram or whatever, and I can see if I can play it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Word. <laughs> uh, and then I have one last question here uh, from the audience, and we talked about this a little bit before the stream actually started about how we love answering questions like this, but what is the most difficult Amonomarth track to play and why? <laughs> Uh, by now, I wouldn't say any of the ones who play live 
is super hard to play because I played him like 200 times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but learning them was a bit of a struggle, especially a specific drum fill in a part of first kill. I think it's like 32 bars long or something. It's really, really long. Jeez. <clears throat> so I had to like cut it up into eight or four parts or whatever it was and just like okay now i nail this one and now i have to do this one and this one and this one and then i have to combine them right that but, makes sense uh, but then i learned that one and yeah then we took this song uh, victorious march into our playlist and somehow i could not learn the structure of that song i, I don't know why but it's just one of those songs you know you, you you have heard it so many times but you still don't know what's supposed to be the next part yeah it just doesn't click in the brain for some reason no and i, I don't know why it's not a super complicated song i can still I, I can play all the parts very very well but just don't know in which order right, play them. <laughs> right. <laughs> thank god but for click I, tracks right yeah absolutely and then, <laughs> and then and then i sat down in a hotel room in uh, south america <clears throat> on the last tour we did before this uh, covid uh close uh, closing whatever uh and i just analyzed it like okay we're gonna put this song into and i just wrote every part up into a document like this long yeah and then i realized oh this is the same this is the same this is the same oh and these two as well and then now, now i know it but oh, just that's didn't awesome. take the time so that's cool so, sometimes yeah. It, sometimes it takes the like those weird little things to kind of like get it to finally click is it's just like seeing it visually or, or hearing it like a different way i've i've experienced that myself learning songs where i'm like having such a hard time just like figuring it out and locking everything in and then you know i'll 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 look at it you know on, from a slightly <laughs> different perspective and be like oh okay that makes sense now i get it um yeah. yes I, I have actually come to terms with uh I read online somewhere that if you want to learn a new song uh, as a drummer, you should learn the lyrics. Right. And I was like, does it really make sense? And I tried it in this Victorious March, March song. Uh, and it makes sense. If you know the lyrics, then you know what part, what, what you're supposed to play when he's singing this and this. And that made a lot of sense. And it really helped me learning the song as well. That that absolutely makes sense. I'm a, I'm a huge... Uh advocate for that as well um i think that especially in metal the vocals and the drums are like really hand in hand um because the vocals oftentimes are more of a percussive thing anyway in in yeah. metal they're not super melodic like singing is in a lot of other styles of music so having that understanding of the syncopation between the two uh goes a long way i i tell people the same kind of thing uh pretty often it's like learn the drum parts before you go into the vocal parts and you'll you'll know when everything's supposed to hit so that's a yeah that's good advice um so someone i actually have one more question the last one uh and it's not yeah, a sure monomarth well. related but someone wants to know do you have more kitties than the one in the background <laughs> uh yes one actually came up to the wind oh wait came up to the window uh right there no oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah we have we have, uh, we have two cats one is dexter which uh, is the one you can see up here and then the one in the window is uh, diva that is amazing i'm a i'm a cat lover myself i've got i've got three so oh nice gotta love those kitties well yeah. awesome man is there anything that you would like to shout out or uh or or promote here at the end of this little stream before we log off anything you want to mention to anyone uh not uh, particularly particularly but uh in general support your favorite band by buying their merch and albums especially in these uh these times because uh, now it's the hardest time for uh every band and musician so absolutely the ones you love hell yeah well dude thank you so much for joining us uh again for, for those of me. you who may have just tuned in this is yok from amana marth uh thanks again and uh we'll catch you next time man Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. See you next time.